A couple of videos back, I demonstrated a prototype of a clock that had two outputs. One output was a one tick clock, which is on for half a tick, off for half a tick each cycle. And the other was a half a tick clock, which was on for half a tick and then turned off and then back on immediately at the end of each cycle. I figured that if uh, this was to be useful, it would need to be made much smaller. So in this video, I'm going to show off a few uh, versions I've made for those two clocks which are uh, more compact. Each of them I'm going to uh, have the arbitrary uh, size requirement that's only two blocks high just because a lot of the stuff I like to build uh, can fit underground easily. So this uh, first version I'm going to show is uh, just a half tick on half tick off clock and it starts with the typical uh, 1.5 tick clock base except it has one of the outputs delayed by an extra tick. That produces a 1.5 tick on, 1.5 tick off output uh, here. Then this output is simply routed, so it's powering this piston through this block after zero ticks, this piston through this repeater after one tick, and this piston through these two repeaters after two ticks. Each of these pistons is uh, has a conducting block attached and it's situated such that when that block is uh, extended it'll be strongly powered by a torch. Those strongly powered blocks will then power redstone pieces that are next to them and these combined will then form the one point or the 0 0.5 tick on 0 0.5 tick off clock. And um, the way this works is when a, as I said in the last video on this subject, uh, a 1.5 tick on, 1.5 tick off signal will cause a piston to extend with its uh, attached block, uh, power the redstone next to it for half a tick, and then retract. And so since there's three of these and it cycles every three ticks, it'll be a half tick on, half tick off, half tick on, half tick off, half tick on, half tick off, and then it cycles. And since it just looks like it's off, I'll show this actually working with the piston being powered by that signal and you can break this piston. Alright, so this clock, uh, its design essentially was three pistons along the length of it, uh, and its size was nine long by five wide. Now this clock is the same size, but the only difference is that it has the pistons instead of being along its length, along its width. So it starts with the same 1.5 tick clock base, delayed by one more tick on one side to make a 1.5 tick on, 1.5 tick off signal here. This signal then is sent directly into this piston after zero ticks, into this piston through this block after one tick, and into this piston through this block after two ticks. And those are situated in the same way so that they'll power this to be a one a half tick off, half tick on, half tick off clock. The third version of this clock is the same size, but it has the advantage that if um, you wanted the signal to come out of two corners rather than just one, you could do that. Whereas this one, uh, the signal can only come out of one corner. The way this is achieved is by moving the piston that was in this row over one and then stacking it on top of another piston. So to build this clock, you start with again the same base. This is the 1.5 on, 1.5 off output for the uh, starting clock. Then it's directly powering this piston after zero ticks, the bottom piston after one tick, and the third piston after two ticks. Now, in order to get these stacked pistons to both be powered strongly, since we can't put torches below them, we need to use redstone repeaters. Those redstone repeaters are always powered, and the way that's achieved is by having this switch here always on, strongly powering this block so it powers that one, and then powering this redstone so it powers that one. Uh, this third piston then is just on the standard uh, torch like before. Now uh, all three then when they're extended are next to a piece of redstone, and those are connected together to form the output. The disadvantage this clock has versus the first two is that if you only wanted the output to come from one corner, then the signal would need an extra square of internal length. 
so the signal couldn't be extended as long. Whereas here it only needs two squares internally after before it comes out. Here it needs three squares internally. All right, so now I'm going to move on to the uh, 0.5 tick clocks. Uh, this first one is just the first two put together essentially. So you have three pistons along the length of the clock, three pistons along the width, and they are uh, each powered by a 1.5 tick section delayed by 0, 1, and 2 ticks. 0 0.5 tick section delayed by 0, 1, and 2 ticks. The only difference then is that there needs to be the bridge section like I had in the original prototype which will split the signal into the right timings for each side. So to achieve that, I've removed the uh, repeater here from the 1.5 tick uh, clock input, and I've effectively moved it up here and down here. Now what that achieves is it allows the other signal from the near repeater to the clock to strongly power this block and have that power this piece of redstone without interfering with this signal that's going to be passing over it. So in total we have from this clock the near side of its near output is delayed by one two ticks before getting to here and its far side is delayed by one tick. So we have the nearer side being one more tick delayed over here. The other way it has one two three ticks for the far side and two ticks for the near side. So the far side is uh, delayed by one extra tick going to these three pistons. Now these three pistons are uh, then again bunched together like this. I could just combine them and make the 0 0.5 tick clock um, output but I want to demonstrate this a little bit so I'm going to go like this and then put the pistons here Now you turn the clock off. So while it's on, you can see that this piston will break easily. So will this one. But the one that's powered by the two inverted sides, which are each 0 0.5 on, 0 0.5 off, so this one's powered by half tick. Every half tick can never be broken. Now, uh, one thing I want to note about this is that this side, remember, was uh, 3 and 2, whereas this side was 2 and 1. It doesn't actually matter that the timings of these sections here, the 1.5 tick sections, aren't in verses of each other. And the reason that it doesn't matter is because when they're put through these three pistons, they just become 0 0.5 on, 0 0.5 off. So it doesn't matter what these uh, sections here are with respect to each other, as long as they have the opposite timings with respect to this clock. All right, so bring this up a little bit. Uh, the last clock I want to show is the same, except it's more compact. So this was 11 blocks long and eight blocks wide. This clock, though, is only seven blocks wide, still 11 blocks long. And the way it achieves the space saving is by crowding all of the pistons around one small area for the 0 0.5 tick signal. So the disadvantage of this clock is that you can't separate out, separate out the opposing uh, 0 0.5 on, 0 0.5 off signals. But you can still have a uh, the 0 0.5 tick clock, and it's in a smaller space. All right, so uh, this starts out the same way with the repeater here, put up here and down there so we can make the bridge. The near signal comes over here after two ticks and far signal comes over here after one tick. So this is the 1.5 on, 1.5 off signal. This gets delayed by an extra tick through here. So now this is the actual 1.5 on, 1.5 off signal that's gonna power the pistons on this side. Uh, this is zero tick delayed, one tick delayed, two tick delayed, and then those again are over uh, torches. The other side's a little more complicated. Um, it starts off with the uh, near side being de delayed only one tick into this section, or, or sorry, the far side delayed only one tick, whereas the near side is delayed one, two, three ticks. 
into this section. Now notice that this piece of redstone is connected to this one. Even though it looks like there's a piston that it's connecting to, it's actually not at all uh, powering this piston. This piston is powered separately by this piece of redstone powering this block, powering that piston. This piece of redstone really just connects down here. So this then becomes our first 1.5 tick section. This then is delayed by one tick through here, so now this is the one that's really powering everything. Uh, it'll power this block after zero ticks, but then powering this piston. It'll power this piston after one tick, and that block will then power this block over here after two ticks. And that redstone will power this block, then powering this piston. So over here we have zero, one, and two tick delays, and over here we have zero, one, and two tick delays. And then this is all combined into just four squares here. And to again show that this is actually a 0 0.5 tick clock, I will try to break this in fail. Alright, so this has been a video showing more compact ways to build 0 0.5 on and 0 0.5 off clocks and also 0 0.5 total cycle clocks where they're just on by for half a tick each half a tick. Uh, thank you for your time.